In this quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom GPT on the OpenAI Playground. That is this place, not this place. Now creating a custom GPT in the normal GPT interface that we're used to is great and fun, but there's a couple of problems with it and limitations. One limitation is that after 40 messages in three hours, you can't use your custom GPT anymore. And also you can't use it with external sources, with external applications. However, creating a custom GPT on the OpenAI opens you to a world of possibilities. What does that look like? Well, for example, I have a custom GPT flow here that connects to three different custom GPTs that does a lot of SEO work for me, a little bit of research, but creates one creates the uh, on-page content because he's an expert SEO. One creates the meta description, another one creates the FAQ structured data, and then sends all that incredibly made content to a Google Sheet. You can create so many little workers for you with the OpenAI Playground, making your custom GPTs there. And everyone has access to this, by the way. Now, before we start, I need to explain the difference here. When you have ChatGPT+, Plus, it's the $20 subscription, right? But the OpenAI, the playground, that's a different, different service. Because you're getting charged for the API call, you're going to need to have your billing, so your credit card payments here. This is separate from the payment of the $20 if you're using uh, ChatGPT Plus, by the way. So you need to put your credit card details. This isn't a tutorial about that. If you want a tutorial on how to set yourself up with the playground, let me know. But this is just about how to create a custom GPT. So this is different. You're gonna get paid for the API call every time you use your custom GPTs on the playground, but it's extremely cheap. We'll get started right away. You're gonna go to the link up here, which is platform.openai.com. Playground Assistance, I'll leave the link in the description. If you're watching this on TikTok, I'll leave it on the uh, video here. So we're gonna go to, um, these are these are all the assistants that I've made. Uh, they're all newsletter writers, LinkedIn post writers, code experts and stuff like that, they really help. Once you're in the assistant tab here, there's a button on the top right corner called Create. You're going to create a custom GPT. So. If you have already created a GPT in the other end, so in here by going to uh, explore GPTs and then you go create my GPT, it's very simple, it's very much the same. You're still giving it a name, you're giving it a description and you're giving it instructions. If you've never made a custom GPT, there's a couple of things that you wanna keep in mind. One, the name here, we're gonna create this one as a meta description generator. And the instructions is where you put in your prompt. What makes a good, really, uh, really good prompt for this stuff is a couple of things. You want to give it a persona, so like a user, what it is that it does. You want to give it some background, and most importantly, you want to define the output. So if you have those three things in your prompt in your instructions, you should be set. Uh, for this instance, we're gonna set the model to Turbo. I like Turbo when it comes to copywriting. I find it a little bit better. And just for to be safe, I'm gonna select both of these things. The code interpreter is the thing that allows it to create, read, and write code very well. And the retrieval is, ah, if you upload knowledge files, which I can show you in a second how to do, it'll make sure that it'll look at those files before it answers. And there's really good use cases for that. I might do another video on that, but this is gonna be a very, very simple setup. So I've named my GPT. Uh, I'm gonna have some custom instructions. I've got a prompt for a meta description generator here. Uh, I won't go through the whole prompt, but uh, all its job is to grab the information that we give it and create a optimized meta description out of that. I'm gonna copy that prompt and I'm gonna put it here. And that is pretty much done. I'm not gonna put any knowledge base there at this point in time, because it's a very simple one. And I'm gonna go and see it on the playground. And the playground is where I can test this thing out. So I wanna test it out, I'm gonna get some content. When you're on the playground, make sure you've selected the, the uh, assistant that you actually wanna test. I've got a lot of assistants here, but I wanna test this one that we've created. And I've got some uh, content in the other screen here, but I'm just gonna chuck it here and then run it. You always wanna test your uh, GPT before you actually go ahead and do it yourself or put it anywhere else. And this is pretty good. So I've gave it all this content and it created me a optimized meta description. I'm happy with the output. That means my prompt is working the way I want to. Now, before we go and show you how you can connect it to somewhere else, that's it, you're kind of done. 
The most important thing out of this, if you want to use it somewhere else, your assistant, is to know what the um, kind of the code of the assistant is. For example, the assistant code for me is this one right here. That doesn't matter too much depending on what application you're using. Before we go into that, I want to show you the usage. So the cost for that, uh, it's not this. This was yesterday. I created like 70 blogs, and for that I did, I used like three dollars and 25 cents so it's very very minimal you're not going to like if you're very careful you're not going to use too much money here so we've got our assistant meta description generated it's working the way that we want how can we use it now well if we go to make which if you want to try make i'll leave the link in the description below you can try it for free it's an incredible automation tool let's see if we can find our meta description generator so we're gonna start a new sequence here, it's a new scenario. Uh, and we're going to see if right off the bat we can find it. We're not gonna create a whole sequence. If you want me to create a whole sequence about what, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do one. Uh, on the search app and modules, I'm gonna to go to uh, OpenAI and see more. And I'm going to select message assistant. You will have to connect your OpenAI account and stuff for that, but again, this is an tutorial about that. And you see, if I select Message Assistant, I can click down, and because I've created my account with this and connected it, there's my meta description generator that I've just created. And now I can use that in my flow. Why this is such a good thing is because sometimes when you're using a custom GPT in the front end, I mean, here, even if you create a GPT here, you will, if you use it a lot for work and your team is using the same GPT account, you are limited to 40 messages every three hours or sometimes it differs. Whereas if you build it in the back end and you build a flow, you only get charged for the API calls. You don't have any limits, only the amount that you're spending for the API calls. So really interesting use case. You can use it so many other ways. This is just a very quick tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below what other kind of automations, tutorials, or things you wanna see with custom GPTs. Cheers.